Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to the Jimmy Dias Symposium a la 2022. We're doing it virtually because of COVID, but we think we need to do it and we hope that you'll enjoy it. To remind you that Jimmy Dias had three major awards and is unique in the sense that he's the only person who have earned America's two highest awards for heroism, the Carnegie Medal and the Medal of Honor. And you'll see a nice story about him coming up in a minute. I also would like to point out that we're honoring a total of four people this year, uh, three from Augusta and one, uh, Bob Carey, who's a Medal of Honor recipient he'll be, who is in New York. Because he won't be able to be here this year, he'll be able to come next year. So if you missed him personally this year, you'll get to meet him next year. Now we give everybody a Jimmy Dias Award, Distinguished American Award, and there is an award that we give them. And in addition, there is an exhibit that we unveil every year, which has the names of all the recipients of the Distinguished American Award that we've given all the way back since Jack Jacobs in 2011. So let's take a look at Jimmy Dias for about seven minutes, the recipients of the award coming up five minutes each, and then I'll wrap it up. So the whole event will take no more than 30 minutes of your time. So stick with us, and I hope you have a good time. It's well known throughout the Augusta area that Jimmy Dias is the only person in history to have received America's two highest awards for heroism, the Carnegie Medal and the Medal of Honor. What is not widely known are his many other accomplishments. His heroism started early. In fact, at the age of 13, he saved someone from drowning. He earned the rank of Eagle Scout the following year a very special accomplishment for someone so young. At the Academy of Richmond County, he was a cadet officer, a scholar, and a fine athlete. Later at Clemson College, he was a high-ranking officer in the Clemson Cadet Corps, a varsity football player, and an all-American marksman. In 1930, Dias led the Southeast College team to victory in the National Marksmanship Championship at Camp Perry. At age 19, Jimmy was walking on the beach at Sullivan's Island when he saw that two swimmers were in trouble. Without hesitation, he swam far out to try to assist them. The long swim back with two women in tow was exhausting. For his successful act of selfless valor, he received the Carnegie Medal. Dias was a very modest man. Many of his closest friends did not know he had earned this iconic medal. In 1934, at the First Presbyterian Church in Augusta, he married Connor Cleckley. In 1936, he became a member of the Marine Corps Reserves and a leader of its highly ranked marksmanship team. With war clouds on the horizon in the autumn of 1940, First Lieutenant Jimmy Dias was called to active duty. Dias quickly moved up the ranks. By the spring of 1943, he was a lieutenant colonel in command of a battalion of 800 troops in the 24th Marine Regiment. He commanded with great confidence and compassion. He loved his troops, and his troops loved him. In January 1944, the 4th Marine Division sailed from San Diego. The destination, the Japanese-held Marshall Islands. Dias led his Marines from the front as his battalion stormed onto the heavily defended island of Roy Namur. As dusk approached on the first day of the battle, he realized that Marines from another battalion were in serious trouble. Fighting his way through enemy lines, Dias rescued four seriously wounded Marines who were surrounded by the enemy. On the last day of the battle, as he was leading his men against a Japanese pillbox, Jimmy Dias was shot and killed. A few months later in Augusta, his wife, Connor, received the Medal of Honor. Jimmy's younger sister, Sarah Ewing, often commented that there was a pattern in Jimmy's life. From an early age, whenever anyone was in danger, he felt compelled to take action, no matter the risk. Jimmy Dias's heroism has been recognized many times since his death in 1944. Shortly after the battle, 
The airfield on Roy Namor was named in his honor. Dias Field remains active today in support of space activities of NASA and the military services. The ship, the USS Dias, was commissioned in 1945. This destroyer served America for 36 years and saw action in the Vietnam War. In 1997, the headquarters of the 24th Marines in Kansas City was named in his honor. In 1998, the Jimmy Dias Parkway in Augusta was opened. In 2004, Clemson University awarded Dias its highest award, the Doctorate of Humane Letters. In 2005, on the second floor of the Augusta Museum of History, a permanent exhibit was opened. This exhibit honors Dias and two ships, the USS Augusta and the USS Dias. In 2011, the first Jimmy Dias Symposium was held. Every year at this symposium, a Medal of Honor recipient is honored for his lifetime of contributions to America and his fellow citizens. Also at this symposium, two outstanding citizens who have a connection to the Augusta area are honored. In 2015, the book Courage, Compassion, Marine, The Unique Story of Jimmy Dias was published. Also in 2015, a revised version of the DVD, Twice a Hero, was released. In the spring of 2022, a cast aluminum marker will be unveiled on Sullivan's Island, South Carolina. This marker will be located at the spot where, in 1928, Jimmy Dias dove into the surf to save the lives of two women. This two-sided marker is designed to last for 100 years or more. In color will be a picture of Clemson undergraduate Jimmy Dias and the emblems of the Medal of Honor, the Carnegie Medal, and the Eagle Scout Award. Placing the marker next to the boardwalk's approach will ensure that beachgoers will be able to read both sides going to and coming back from the shore. In summary, Augustin Jimmy Dias epitomizes the nobility of public service. It is most fitting that his legacy is preserved. It is hoped that Marine Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Dias will serve as an inspiration for all, and most importantly, as a role model for young Americans for decades to come. Has your marketing skill been helpful in working with uh, worthy causes at, at all? <laughs> well, I'd, I'd have to leave that for someone else to judge. Uh -huh. I, uh, I uh, anticipate how to present things and to make it appealing to broader people. That's part of the fun of it, to figure out, you know, and also the old marketing cliche, if you don't ask for the order, you're probably not going to get it. So you've got to get over it. And a lot of people that we've encountered in, in, our, in <clears throat> our career have been shy. Cripes. I, I, I started out shy, but you learn soon on. Not everybody is going to come to the conclusion. So you kind of need to nudge them a little bit or push them a little bit or say, in fact, go back and say, well, what do you think about that? How would you handle that? And that then brings them out with, they're not going to volunteer it. They're not going to jump in. Uh, not everybody's a Charlie Moore. But some people need to be enfolded and brought in and made right. to feel comfortable. Right. And that's, that's, uh, that's the thing that probably my <clears throat> marketing uh, exposure and experience uh, has stayed with me the longest. We, we like to put our money in places that we are interested in. And the other part of that is we like to be part of the action, yeah. you know, not just to write the check and let that be that. So I think uh, Charlie was always so busy with his profession, and I had more time to give to the community, but 
I, I was the one who developed the interest, and he was the one who wrote the check. So <laughs> that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good combination. <laughs> well, we were a team. Yeah. We were yeah, team. And, yeah. You're, and you're still a team. We're and, you're, and you're still content. Blessed, blessed beyond, Perry. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful yeah. to have this lady with me. Yes. We often critique. We'll be watching something on TV in the evening, and you don't have to save it till you see somebody the next day. You turn and say, did you understand what they say? How does that strike you? I mean, we solve <laughs> a lot of issues just back and forth. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, that's a blessing, no question. Well, let me ask you this one. Of all the time here, particularly here in Augusta, what was the most joyful moment you had? Was some, somebody wrote you a big check or when you went to a particular <laughs> performance or... What was the most joyful moment here in Augusta over the last 30 years or so? Yeah. Bill Coleman came to me and he said, Charlie, we've got a really good candidate to be the head. Would you, would you mind the interviewer? And I said, well, okay, I'll be happy to do that, Bill. And it was a delight interviewing Nancy. And it has been a continuing uh, ex banquet no. to oh, watch yeah. all that she's okay. done for the community and for this museum. Yeah, see. Yeah. And how, how about you? What was the most joyful moment that you had? Well, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking how, and you know, you go through the file cabinet, which, which one is the most <laughs> joyful? <laughs> but uh, certainly the, the, um, with the YWCA, we paid off our debt, and that was pretty high up there. Um, it was, um, it had, uh, I also learned you never go on a board unless you read their balance sheet. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so you had not read the balance sheet. I had not read the balance sheet, and I was quite shocked. And, uh, and um, that was when Mr. Presley was president of the Georgia Railroad Bank. And so I went into him and I said, how do I get out of this? So anyway, that was, that was a shocking moment. The joyful moment, I think, is when, as I see the symphony coming along, and certainly now with their own building, it, it is, it's shocking in a way to support it, but it is a joy to, for them to have a home because they were founded in the 50s and have been wandering yes. since. So that, that is, that's very fine to see, to go into the hall and see all of these people and that it is appealing to a wide variety uh -huh of our community, and I like that. And I think someone, I, I can't remember exactly who the person was, because what I did, I made sure that I went to workshops. I made sure that I went to uh, some of the conferences and got information from a lot of people. And so that's how I really got started with those kinds of things. And we'll see you using those same diagrams. Oh, I don't know, but there's a, there are a lot of students, because I was also um, the um, president of the children's uh, program. The Senator Walker had a youth leadership program, mm -hmm. and they had enough money so that we, had, we were able to do all kinds of things with them. But anyway, uh, some of those students, they are doctors, lawyers, <laughs> and they come back and they'll say, oh, Miss Betts, how are you? I came by to see you. And I think to myself, oh, he was a little boy. <laughs> uh -huh. 
yeah. <laughs> and so that's how it's it's really cute. Like Monique and her children, she has uh, ch her children are graduates now and that kind of thing. But it makes me feel really, really good that so many of them come back. They understand what we were trying to do, and they will come back and do whatever they can. I have to say the Knoxes. The Knoxes have, they started at first. I remember um, I, I told Mrs. Knox, I met Mrs. Knox at the Sacred Heart one day and she came up to me and we started talking. I didn't know who she was. And uh, so anyway, um, she said, well, I think you are doing a pretty, you are doing a good job. And she said, um, I think I'll, uh, I asked her if she would give us, because someone told me that was a good person to ask. And so I said, so I said, okay. So she said, okay, I'm going to, uh, you just send me a letter. That's what she said. She said, send me a letter uh, to my office, to my staff's office. And so the young lady who sent me a letter went back I took the letter that I sent. She sent me a letter and said they were not accepting any more um, people, you know, for the. And so when I saw her again, I thought again. She said, "Did you get some funding from me?" And I said, "No." I said, uh, "I got a letter that said that uh, you they were not you're not giving out any money any more money at this time." And uh, she said, okay, I'll sort of fix that. <laughs> and ever since then, she's been doing it. <laughs> and we, uh, I need uh, um, funding sometimes. And I, sometimes I'm embarrassed, to, you know, all that. But they don't care. They just really, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, as you know, if, you, uh, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, they will help. And uh, so they have been very, very gracious. The leadership of Augusta was really good for me because I didn't know very much about, I knew about the museum, but, and I knew a great deal about the educational process, but I didn't know anything, or not very much, about business or the commissioners and all that kind of thing, not very much. It was just amazing how much information that I had missed because I would talk to the commissioners and I would talk to other people in the particular area, you know, it would be education or it would be uh, the museums, Museums were very uh, supportive and that kind of thing. So uh, it was very, very helpful. What I'd like to do is uh, not focus on your Medal of Honor, but focus on your life after your Medal of Honor and what caused you to get into public service, uh, both as a politician and as a university administrator and, and leader and all that. In other words, your life of, co of contributions to worthy causes, really your whole life, but particularly uh, uh, in, in more recent years. So I'd like you to talk about that a little bit. You know, it's, it's, it, it all sort of comes together in, in one big way. And I got most of this from my, my parents, which is that, you know, you can, you can be selfish inside of your own family um, in order to be able to you know, to, to get where you want to be, but if if you if you if you really want to make progress as a as 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 humanity, um, it, it has to be uh, that you're thinking about other people. It has to be. Um, it seems to me uh, the group itself saying we're going to try to do something good on behalf of uh, of humankind, and I think the United States does that. Uh, it's not that we don't have our mistakes. Vietnam may or may not have been one. I happen to think it was. Uh, but it, it, slavery certainly was, 
But the worst thing we ever did doesn't make us a bad country. Quite the contrary. We have the opportunity to, to remake our country every single time we, we gather as a, as, a, as a people with the Congress. So uh, I, I just believe in, in um, you know, the biblical, it's better to give than to receive. And I, I'm a living, breathing example of somebody who's benefited um, more from giving than from receiving. Well, let me follow up on that a little bit, Bob. Tell me, uh, what worthy causes have you been involved in in more recent years? Well, higher education is a, is a big one. Um, I mean, I've been involved with, with starting a, a new university out in San Francisco. We started about 10 years ago. I've been involved with a not-for-profit uh, in New York that's helping uh, people who are in the workforce who want to uh, acquire training to um, you know, to, to go beyond that. Uh, I was obviously on the 9-11 Commission and did that, uh, trying to answer the question, what happened? How do we get there and what do we do to minimize the danger to the country in the future? I was, uh, you know, Newt Gingrich and I co-chaired a task force on, on long-term care, and most uh, pointedly on Alzheimer's. What can we do to reduce the, the, the risk that is associated with Alzheimer's? And Congress, to their credit, uh, implemented everything we recommended. So. It's, I mean, the, 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 my, one of my problems is if you ask me to do something and I think it's worthwhile, I almost always say yes. So um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not short of things that I'm working on. Uh, well, again, let me uh, follow up. Uh, you say you get actually more out of giving than receiving. Uh, tell me a little bit about what, what you mean by that. Well, I mean, to turn it around just for the moment. I mean, uh, um, uh, now, you know, you, I'm sure on Veterans Day, people walk up to you and say, thanks for your service. And I, they say, well, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate that. But uh, it's, you know, serving, serving the United States is relatively easy. That's a, it's, it's such a good cause. It's not a difficult thing to do. And uh, my country doesn't owe me anything. Um, uh, I owe my country something. I, it's a, it's a, so I, 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 you know, the Veterans Administration saved my life um, as a result of that. And the Navy saved my life. It, say would almost kill me before but uh you know it, it it gave me a chance to put my life back together and i'm grateful for it and and gratitude is a choice you know it's it's not something that uh falls down from sky you you get up in the morning and you get to decide am i grateful today and uh i i make the effort to get up every single day um, and say i'm grateful i mean i'm talking to you right now at a prosthetic clinic out in omaha nebraska um, and I'm here because uh, uh, there's pain when I walk. And that pain doesn't cause me to get angry and bitter. Uh, it could. I could choose to be angry. I could choose to be bitter. But I don't. And the young man who's young, he's, not, he's in his 60s now as well. But you know, he's going to come in here in about 15 minutes and he's going to work on this thing. And he's going to decrease my pain. And I'm going to thank him for doing it. So it's, a, it, it's just a steady... Um, um, pace, it seems to me, of day-to-day -day deciding uh, what's your attitude towards life. And I try to, I try to choose the most important, uh, to me, attitude of all, which is to be grateful and to be as kind as possible, even to people who don't like me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And I'd like to conclude this event by thanking the people who have been the great supporters. We have had more supporters for this uh, event than we've ever had before. We've raised more money than we've ever had before. So there are a lot of people out there watching this. I want to thank you, thank you, and thank you. I also want to make a, make a point about a couple other things. First, to thank Nancy Glazer, the director of the museum, and all she's done throughout the year to make sure this has come together, and all she's going to do next year to make it all come together. I'd also like to announce the, uh, the, uh, the recipients for next year, for 2023. We'll stick with Bob Carey. He'll come down for New York. He really wants to be here, so he'll be here as the Medal of Honor recipient. But we'll have two other people that we're going to honor. First is Pat Knox Hudson, who everybody knows, who has been so supportive of so many good causes here for many, many years. And the other one is Ed Gillespie, who ran University Hospital for many years and started such wonderful things as Brandon Weil, as Health Central, uh, as Walton Rehab, and he will be honored. So we'll have three people honored next year. I'd like to wrap it up by thanking uh, Connor Smith, my wife, the daughter of Jimmy Dias, and all the support she has given to the museum and to this event all the year. So I'd like to announce also there'll be an event this spring 
in 2022 at Sullivan's Island, where we'll unveil a marker, a two-sided permanent marker that'll last 100 years, which will honor Jimmy Dias at the absolute point where he dove into the water and saved the two women in 1928. And on that event, he earned the Carnegie Medal. And we'll announce very much throughout the whole community when this event will take place, because some of you may want to go to Sullivan's Island at uh, station 18 and a half, where he saved those lives. And thanks once more for coming and watching this. And please come next year on the 12th of January, 2023. We'll do it in the rotunda. We'll have people there. You will come and we'll have a wonderful time. Thank you so much.